Hi, this is Chandra, and the topic for this series of lectures is set theory. As far as the relevance goes, it's an important topic for most of the aptitude exams. The easier ones are going to have one or two questions, mostly the standard variety which will cover on the board itself. And uh, if the paper setter wants to make a difficult question, there's a lot of scope for him to do it. However, cat, even cat has not really given a very, very difficult one, right? So a topic is a scoring one and has to be in the attempt list of most of the students, right? So what is a set? A set is just a collection of objects satisfying a criteria. Since the variety of questions are limited, the best way to learn it is taking an example. So I'm starting with an example. This is my classroom and uh, I have students sitting in front of me and surprisingly all the student name starts with a different alphabet. So it's very easy to identify, right? So the layout is I've written all the students in my classroom. They identified as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H till Z, right? So I ask them a question. How many of you drink tea? Raise your hands and keep them raised. I want to count. I want to make a note of who drink tea. So this is the criteria that I was talking about, right? Satisfying a criteria. All those students who have raised their hands, they satisfy the criteria that they drink tea. The ones who have not raised the hands, they do not drink tea, right? So I'm looking at those who drink tea. So I start listing down, okay, A drinks tea. I note his name down. B drinks tea. C doesn't. So D, C has not raised his hand. He would not. D, E, F, do not, G, and so on. I make a list of all those who drink tea. They say, thank you very much. Lower your hands. Another question. How many of you drink coffee? Please raise your hands and keep them raised. Now, this is another set, another second set because the criteria has changed, right? So now I'm looking, okay, A and B have not raised their hands. They do not drink coffee. C has raised his hand. D, E, F, G, all of them have raised their hand. They drink coffee. So I make a note of their names. C, D, E, F, G, I, N, and so on. And I say, thank you very much. The lecture continues. Later on, I'm just analyzing this data. Let us study the habits of tea and coffee drinking. So I see, let's see how many drink of uh, tea, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 and 4, 15 and 1, 16. Oh, so there are 16 people in my class who drink tea. How many people drink coffee? How many students? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 3, 8, 8 and 5, 13 and 1, 14. Oh, so there are 14 people who drink coffee. So good enough. But then on a little recollection, I think, oh, there are 16 individuals here. There are 14 individuals here. If I combine them, if I add them, this turns out to be 30 individuals. But then I know my class has total of just 26 students, A to Z. Then where have these extra four people come in from? What is wrong? Have I made a mistake? Is the data somewhere inconsistent and why is it coming more? So I look at it, okay, A, B are the T one, they are not present here. C is the coffee one, he's not. Oh, there is this D. Oh, so I see this D is present here as well as here. Why is he coming in two lists? Oh, he must have raised his hand when I asked, do you drink tea? Yes, I drink tea. When I asked, do you drink coffee? He again raised his hand. So he's present in both the lists, right? So he is the guy who drinks both. Are there some more like this? Oh, here is G. G is there in both the list. I is there in both the list. J, K are not there. N is there in both the list. S and T, U, V, W. Okay, well, that's it. So these are the people who come in both the list. Oh, so what I understand is this may not be the good way to represent this data. Right? So when I just add the elements of two different sets, what happens is this would lead to double counting which is a which because of which the number of individuals get inflated to more than the true number of individuals right so what's a better way of representing this individuals probably this is a collection of items denoted by a set the second set should overlap this why? Because there are elements which are common to both of them. So this is a better representation and who is going to come in this overlap? D and G is there, I and N is there from the second row, from the third row I have S and W. So these are the individuals who are belonging to both the set, this as well as this. Let me just fill this in who all have left out over here. Oh, so I have A, B, J, K, O, P, T, U and Y. 
And here, who are the other ones? Oh, so I have C, E, F from the first row, which are out over here. G, L is there, Q, V, X, and Z. Oh, so now these individuals have not been written twice. They have been written just once. Good enough, right? So now let me see how many people are there in all. Oh, so I know this circle is 16. Let me still do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, has it? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, and I did I miss something? A, B, J, K. Oh, there's an M missing out there. So let me put it here. Right? So there are 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24. Oh, again a surprise. There's only 24. So let me do the maths bit. Oh, there are 30 that I got earlier. That 30 had 6 involved both ways. So if I subtracted that 6 from them, so obviously I would have got 24. And that is right out over here. So I check it once again. I counted once again. I checked the individuals, but I still get 24. So what happened? There were 26 of them. Now why am I getting less? Why am I getting only 24? And this is the place where the most common errors happen. I'm pretty sure most of you know this over counting, double counting overlap, but what misses out is even without counting them twice, counting them only once, the numbers are only 24 and not 26. So I look at this and I look what is happening. So there's an A, there's a B, there's a C, there's a D, E, F, G. Oh, where is an H? Where is an H out over here? There is no H anywhere. Oh, so this person H is not present. Why is he not present? What happened? Oh, he must have not raised his hand when he, uh, when I asked, what, do, do you drink tea? He did not raise his hand when I asked, do you drink coffee? So he has never raised his hand. So he is not present in any of my list out over here. Oh, so there is an individual like this who doesn't. So what does he? He drinks neither. And so we need to keep in mind, there's also a set of people who drink neither tea nor coffee. It's not necessary that they have to belong to one of the sets out of there. Oh, so he is outside this purview, right? Is there some more out of there? G H I J K L M M is there? N O P Q R R. Do I see an R anywhere? Oh, so there's one more person R out of here, right? And the other is there? S T S T U V W X Y Z. So remember, also H and R are going to be individuals who are going to be outside this set and then my whole 26 people are accounted for, right? So this was the introduction to set. So this is a better representation. Please do not forget the outside people also. Now let's make it into a more uh, textbookish type of 